Hooray, all right. <clears throat> hmm. Smart's like, I got it. I can find a better spot. Is it a reflection or something, or is it? <laughs> okay, sure. What's your eyesight like, Smart? 2020. Okay, sure. All right, we are going to begin. Uh, good morning, everyone. We are right at the end of everything in proof. We actually did P1.1, which strictly speaking, that's what was called the nature of proof. That's where we introduced all the weird language about statements, implications, negations, uh, converses, contrapositives, and so on. And then we just subtly slided into P1.2, which was further mathematical induction. So we carried on from last year's extension one induction. And then we found ourselves in harder territory, and that's what we've been doing for the last little bit. Now, one of the tricky things that Mrs. Lees and I have been um, wrestling with is this is one of those topics where we could just spend forever on it because there's just more and more examples to do and they will feel sometimes quite different to each other. Even though they all share the same DNA, they're all about mathematical induction. So I'm going to point you to some resources at the end of this lesson to help you keep on going. Like, you're like, I want more examples. I want more, like, we don't have the time to spend it here because um, we want to move on to the 3D vector world, but that you should keep on chipping away at it. And I would advise this is one of those topics where rather than a very concerted, I just spent like three weeks and just do all of it and then forget about it for a few months until my next big assessment. I think it's a really good thing to regularly, just every couple of weeks in term two, in term three, just do one question of mathematical induction just to refresh your memory. But as promised, we're gonna do this last part of induction. And you might be looking at this title thinking, what is a first order recursive formula. How is it different to like the Rebellion's recursive formulas? That was a Star Wars joke too early for you. Okay, let's have a look at what each of these means. I'm going to start right in the middle here. Um, recursion. Any software design students in here by any chance? One? Okay, that's all right. You know what recursion is, or at least you've experienced it before. The rest of you, maybe not formally, but you actually have got a very, um, there's a very famous example of recursion that you all know about. And I'd love you to write it down here with me. It's this object. I wonder if you can help me know what this thing is. It has a name. It is the? Come on, it's too early for bad Star Wars jokes, but it's not too early for this, right? Tell me what it is. This is the Fibonacci sequence, right? Now this is a, it's a very simple object. You could um, teach a very young child what this thing is um, and how to get the next number, which is, by the way, 21. 21, thank you. Now here's the important thing. How did you know the next number was 21? How indeed did I know what all of the previous numbers were? How did you recognize? And the answer is, there's a very simple formula that gives you this sequence of numbers. If you want, for example, the nth Fibonacci number, like say the 99th Fibonacci number, how do you calculate it? Go for it, Jeff. It's the sum of the previous two. It's the sum of the sum of the previous two Fibonacci numbers. So the one before the nth one is the n minus one -th Fibonacci number. So there's the one before, and then the one before that would be the n minus two -th Fibonacci number. So you're like, okay, I, I get how to form this, and that's why you said if I wanted, what's this? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If you wanted the eighth one, that's why you added up the sixth and seventh ones. Okay? Now the thing I want you to notice about this formula is that it refers to itself. Does that make sense? It's like, hey, if you want to know what this is, you've got to know what me from the past looked like, right? And this is what we mean by recursion. It's a formula that refers to earlier versions of itself. Now this is a recursive formula. It's not just a, it's not actually the kind we're interested in today. This is called a second order recursive formula. So no, we're not going to deal with ones this hard. The reason why it's second order, you might be able to tell just by looking at how it's written, is that you have to look one step back and then you have to look a second step back. Two steps back means it's a second order recursive formula. You could come up with a third degree recursive formula. Sorry, third order. Um, you'd have to go three steps back, right? We're only going to look at ones where to know what your current term is, you just have to look one back. 
right? Or to work out the next one, you can just go one step forward, okay? So that's what the first order part means. Uh, more technically speaking, what we mean is the difference in term between the highest and the lowest ones is just going to be one, okay? So colloquially, I would say only needs one term previous. Okay, now, we've actually um, been dealing with a few of these formulas within the course, within the advanced course, in fact, not even extension one. Uh, we're going to come to one of those as our second example, but as our first example, let me give you one that's fairly straightforward. I want to come up with a sequence whereby if you want to work out what the next sequence is, you look at the previous one, and then you add double whatever step you are up to. Okay, so to work out the next sequence, uh, sorry, the next term in the sequence, um, you look at your current one and then you add on this particular figure. You also need to know, like with the Fibonacci sequence, like with any recursive sequence, you need to know where to begin, right? So in other words, we need a t0, t sub 0. If we define the first term as term 1 rather than term 0, now what's the next term? It's going to be t2 equals 2 plus, now it's 4, isn't it? That gives me 6. Is that okay? Let's do the next one. Term 3 is going to be this plus 6, which is going to give me 12. Next one's going to be 20. So you can see my gaps, right? 4, and then 6, and then 8, and then 10. Okay, dot, dot, dot. This makes you feel better. All right, let's do our proof by induction all in one go. We're going to test base case is n equals 2. We're going to assume it for n equals k. And then you might think, Mr. Will, you haven't left very much space in your proof step. Well, just watch what's about to unfold. All right, we actually already did this, but let's, uh, let's give it a go. Term 2. Uh, I'm going to establish it first from the formula that I know, and then I'm going to test it with this formula that's unproven. That's my job to prove. Is that okay? So term two from the formula that I know is going to be term one plus two lots of two, which you already worked out for me earlier, is six. Okay. This unproven formula, uh, so I'm going to use, I'm going to actually give this a name. Let's call this one. Using one, I can find t2 in a more direct way without relying on what t1 was. And it's just going to be n squared plus n which gives me six like before, okay? Maybe one thing that might have been helpful to write earlier on is that this is from the recursive formula. So I might even jot that down. From the recursive formula. Because I've got two expressions here for T2, but they come from different places. Um, and then I've just named this particular equation down here. I'm just called it equation one. All right, we're back on track. Now we do our assumptions. So I'm going to assume that this actually does work for n equals k. So I'll just substitute in k squared plus k. And of course, the same limitations or domain restrictions on n act on k as well. So I will say for k is greater than 1. So far, so good. I've left way too much space for my assumed step. I should know better. All right, now we're going to prove for k plus 1. All right, now remember, the recursive formula is the bit that we know. That bit's established, okay? This is the thing we need to prove. What's it equal for the k plus 1 step? Help me out. I'll give you a clue. It starts with some brackets. K plus 1. <laughs> I'm going to square that because that is my substitution into n. And then on the end I add k plus 1. Uh, I'm going to be a little lazy and go one step further. I think I can expand this because it will make the algebra easier for me to search for. k squared plus 2k plus 1, coming up first. And then there's going to be some like terms to collect. How many k's will I have? Three. Three of them. What's my constant? Two. Two. Happy times. This is where I want to arrive. That's my goal. How do I do it? Proof. This is going to be one of the shortest proofs by induction you ever do. And you have done some short ones, I think. Remember, this is where we're trying to head, but what we can use as a foundation is the recursive formula, right? Like that's the thing which is our foundation and is established. So I'm going to say from the recursive formula, 
I can get at this k plus 1 term from a different angle, right? From the recursive formula, the k plus 1 term should be equal to, have a look. If I put in k plus 1 into the recursive formula, what's the first thing that I get? TK. It's really just to be, you know, long about it. It's k plus 1, there's me substituting in n, minus 1. Is that okay? Make that substitution super duper clear. What do I add along the end? Two lots of? K plus 1. Okay, excellent. Now, like you already told me, this is just term k. But I have an idea of what term k is from my, from my what? From my assumption, right here. This is what I'm assuming term k is actually equal to. So I can say, well, let's just, let's just put this in. k squared plus k. And I still have this uh, 2k plus 2 hanging out at the end. You just invoked the inductive hypothesis. So you should say, by assumption. Okay, wonderful. Now, I promised it was going to be a short proof, right? Are we kind of done? Well, I hardly had to do anything. Now, my question for you is, why? They sounded so weird and intimidating, and I even you know, got my wires crossed at the beginning. Why is it, do you think, that proof by induction is the perfect way to deal with first order recursive formulas? Hmm. Do you want to have a stab, Angel? Kind of reminded me of the domino um, analogy. In what way does this remind you of dominoes? No, the, the analogy that they use for induction where it's yep. like if the previous one works, then the next one works. So since these um, recursive formulas are mm -hmm. based on the previous one, yep. so you, you can't, it's kind of similar? Yeah, yeah I'd, I'd say that's a really good job. Were you thinking along similar lines or different ones? Yeah, yeah I'd say so. I think that's perfect, actually. Think about it this way, right? First order recursive formulas are all about looking one step back right, and relying on that. Proof by induction is all about looking one step forward and then making a conclusion from that. You're really looking at the same problem, just from opposite angles. So that's why they kind of very nicely dovetail together.